Why am I still not healed? As a minister of the gospel who believes in the doctrine of healing and who preaches that and prays for people who get healed, and in the ministry where I serve, we see healings, I want to address a topic today that plagues a lot of people. I'm pretty sure you know somebody who did not get healed, and I'm pretty sure that you know currently somebody that you're believing for who is still yet to experience physical healing. And so I want to share with you a few thoughts, six main thoughts concerning when you are not healed or when you don't know somebody who is not healed, what to do. First of all, I want to mention there's three sources of suffering. The first source of suffering is the assault of the devil. It's when the devil attacks a person and the person suffers as a result of that. And in that case, we experience deliverance, the suffering stops. That could be exemplified in torture, in torment, or some kind of a demonic oppression, possession, obsession, or some kind of other demonic activity in the person's life. The second source of suffering is affliction. It's, the Bible says, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them out of them all. And this speaks of affliction as something that every person goes through on this earth. The rain falls on the wicked and it falls on the righteous. It's inescapable. We live in a broken world where sufferings can happen to good, bad, and to anybody. And those afflictions usually don't last very long. They're seasonal. They come and they go. The third type of suffering is the suffering that we embrace as Christians and that comes as a result of following Jesus Christ. For example, being ostracized from the community, being persecuted, being kicked out of a job, being thrown into jail, being uh, mocked, beaten physically, abused because we made decision to follow Jesus. And these sufferings, they are unavoidable. Um, God sometimes chooses to deliver us in these sufferings and sometimes He chooses not to deliver us in these sufferings. Uh, people were martyred, people were killed, people were betrayed, mocked, and as the example of Jesus Christ shows us that in this suffering we pray for endurance and we go through it serving the Lord in the midst of it because these sufferings were promised to us. Now concerning why am I not healed or why is healing not happening? We must understand first and foremost the doctrine of suffering before we talk about healing. The doctrine of suffering is this, is that sin brought suffering. But God used suffering to bring salvation. And so that's pretty much what the doctrine of suffering really stands on, is that we, suffering came into this world because of the original sin. And God used the suffering of His Holy Son, Jesus Christ, to bring salvation into this world. With that said, we must not be defined by our suffering. Whatever that is, even if it's perse being persecuted, even if it's going through trials, tribulations, or experiencing infirmity, or experiencing even certain attacks, we should never allow our sufferings to define us. Why? Because the only suffering that defines us is the suffering of the Lord Jesus Christ. That suffering makes us into children of God. Every other suffering, it refines us, not defines us. Come on, drop amen in the comment below if you believe in that. Now, concerning that, I want to share with you six thoughts. The first one is, being a Christian does not mean you escape suffering, but we learn to endure it. Now you may, I know uh, people who believe that, um, like me, who believe in healing, we sometimes will look at this like, well, but that applies to suffering of persecution. That cannot be applied to suffering of sickness and suffering of infirmity. But even in that suffering, as Christians, Christianity is not a religion or faith that is a bridge over troubled waters of life. Christianity, a lot of times, is the path that walks through them. And the character of Christians is seen in suffering that glorifies Jesus in the same way that could even glorify the Lord as when we experience healing. Paul tells Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 3, he says, Endure suffering as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. The beautiful part about suffering of a Christian, whether it's in sickness, whether it's in going through even certain a season of poverty or going through a season of persecution, is that we as Christians know that we're never alone in suffering. And God does not, is not ashamed of our suffering. God is not ashamed of us when we suffer. He's not, he doesn't wash his hands off of us the moment he notices we're going through the flood or we're going through the fire. He goes with us. When he notices we're going through the valley of the shadow of death, he doesn't depart from us, he walks with us. And that's the source of our encouragement. 
Number two that I want to mention is that don't let Satan rule you through your sickness or your situation. A lot of times, if you notice healing did not come or it's not coming, what Satan will do is that he will seek first to make you feel like you're not a Christian because you're suffering. You're not a, God is not with you because you're going through this. But then he wants you to begin to change your confession, change your belief, and he wants to change you because of your suffering. This happened, you know, with Job. We see that Satan wants to elevate your situation to the position of lordship so that he can rule you through that situation. Satan will use sickness to try to mislead you and lead you away from God. Satan wanted to see, will Job curse God and die? Now, sickness didn't come from God. It's, it's obvious, duh. But Satan uses the sickness to try to see if we can curse God and die, to elevate that sickness to the place of authority, to the place of lordship in our life so that he can now rule our life. And then, you know, Job's wife comes in and says, curse God and die. Don't change God's promise because of your problem. I know you might not know why am I not being healed. Like Vlad, you're not answering my question. I don't know why. Explanation is not always sufficient, but our obedience to God's word is what God requires. And we should not allow our sickness to change God's promise of His divine healing. We should not allow our situation to change our faith in who He is. I'm going to be honest with you. We've been married for 10 years, me and my wife. We don't have children. Biologically, we cannot have children, medically speaking. We went to the doctor, and the doctor says you cannot have children. Okay? Now we have a promise from God that we will have children. I have that promise personally from God, confirmed with hundreds, I'm not exaggerating, hundreds of prophecies. So I believe we're going to have children. But as of today, it's been 10 years, and I don't see that. It's easy to begin to look at the fact that it's, it's happened 10 years and say, you know what? Maybe it's not God's will for us to have children. Or maybe, you know, we're just going to settle and let this situation begin to dictate our confession and dictate our happiness and everything. But we can't do that as Christians because we have a Lord in our life. And that Lord is not our barrenness, it's not our persecution, it's not our pain, and it's not our suffering. It's not the death of loved one, it's not unanswered prayer or disappointment in relationship. Our Lord, His name is Jesus Christ. So we don't let nobody rule and reign over us except Him. That situation is not over us, it's under us. Even if it's not being solved, even if we don't have an explanation, even if we are in the fog right now, Jesus is the light, Jesus is the strength, and he's the Lord of our life. Number three, when we are suffering and when we are not being healed of a particular illness, that we are believing it's God's will, what do we do? Do we continue to pray for it, take medicine, or we just embrace it as God's will? My personal recommendation, pastoral recommendation, and as somebody who honestly is going through something right now, and that is to move from having faith in healing to having faith in the healer. The problem with many people, why they get disappointed in the area of healing is because they have faith in faith, not faith in God. Paul, one time he said this, he says that I know in whom I believe. He didn't say I know in what I believe. Now Paul believed proper things, but he says I know in whom I believe. Job said, same thing, he says I know my Redeemer lives. So we have to move from having faith in healing to having faith in the healer. Now don't get me wrong. I believe healing is in the atonement. I believe the healing is the promise. I believe Jesus took his our sickness upon himself and he died on the cross and by his stripes we were healed. But my faith is not in healing. My faith is in the healer. He never fails. When I put my trust in God, I will never be disappointed. But if I put my faith in healing and it has to happen by September because that's what the prophet said, I will, I will be disappointed. And trust me, I am. If I would have my faith in prophecies, I would be disappointed by now because a lot of prophecies said this would happen by last year in September. And I know some of you may say, well, but it's because you didn't have enough faith. I had faith. I sowed even financially in that promise and everything. But what, why I'm not disappointed is because I don't have faith in healing. I have faith in a healer and he will heal me. He will restore my body, whether now or in the future. But he will never change. His nature never changed and His Word doesn't change. But your faith rests in Jesus, not in 
Heal it. That's a huge. And you move from feeling to knowing. You know, both Job and Paul went through seasons of hurting and suffering. But they both resolved to know, not to feel. When healing is not manifesting in your life, move from feeling to knowing. Knowing what? Your healer is alive. And your faith is in your healer. Number four. Do you continue to pray for healing or not? Of course. But begin to pray out of God's promise instead of out of the problem of your sickness. Pray out of the promise instead of out of the problem. So, like, this is what I do. I no longer just pray, God, heal my body. I pray those prayers already. I believe God heard those prayers. Now, why it's not happening right now, I don't know. You may say, what if it will not happen? I don't know. But what if it will happen? I continue to not necessarily pray, but I praise God that His promise is yes and amen. I praise God that His character is good. I praise God that by His stripes I was healed. And so I no longer pray for that. I prayed before. But now I pray out of His promise and I praise Him for it. If you've prayed already, God has given you faith that it's yours. Pray out of that promise and praise Him. It says in Judges 3 verse 1 and 2, it says, Now these nations which the Lord left, that He might test Israel by them, that is, all who had not known any wars in Canaan. This was the only generation of the children of Israel. This was the generation of children of Israel that might be taught to know war, at least who had not formally known it. I want you to see that God allows nations to remain in the promised land for two reasons. Now He promised He will give them this promised land. He promised that to Abraham, he promised that to Isaac, he promised that to Jacob, he promised that to the children of Israel. They were suffering in Egypt, they were suffering in wilderness, and they finally occupied this promised land. Now, because of their not willingness to remove all the enemies, but then the Lord makes this very interesting statement. He says, the Lord let them be left in the land to do two things, to test Israel. Will they still obey him in the presence of these enemies? And secondly, to teach them to fight. So meaning God allowed for these nations to remain there. First to see, will they be obedient to me? Will they allow these nations to change their worship? And secondly, He wanted to teach them to fight. And I believe when certain situation prolongs, or certain sicknesses are not healed, it's not a sign that sickness is from God. That's not a sign that said praying for healing is wrong. Because if that's the case, then so is going to the doctor is wrong. So is taking Advil, so is taking medicine, so is going for chemotherapy, massage and, you know, chiropractor. So is getting a surgery that becomes, you know, against the will of God. So we can't allow the situation to change God's promise now just because it got prolonged. And just because the previous person that we prayed for, they never got healed and they died. So now it must be God's will to heal some, not to heal some. We, we, don't, we don't let life explain God. We let God redefine life for us and His Word. So with that said, we begin to pray out of place of victory, out of the place of faith, out of the place of praise, out of the place of assurance. He is good. He wants good things. And nowhere do we see in the Bible where God uses sickness to discipline His people. Does He use sickness sometimes to accomplish His purposes? Yeah, He can use anything. He's a big God. He can use a donkey to speak to a prophet. But does God use donkeys to speak to people? No, He uses His Word. And the same thing applies to sickness. Can God use a sickness to teach you a lesson and to test you? Yes, He can use anything. But He also wants to teach you to fight. He wants you to fight against that sickness because it's not His will. And if healing does not come, pray out of His promise. Stand in faith and pray out of that faith. Worship Him and thank Him because that's really how a lot of times healing will manifest. When we shift our mind, from trying to pray for it, to begin to pray out of it. Number five, if you are suffering, if you're sick, it's not an excuse to stop serving. Now, of course, in maybe limited capacity. A lot of times what happens is that when people are sick, they begin to feel like, well, I no longer have the assurance and faith to pray for other people, minister to other people. The first healing that happened in the Bible happened when Abraham, whose own wife was barren, was a man of faith. Abraham was a great friend of God. Abraham was the father of faith. Abraham received a covenant and yet his wife was barren. 
You know, and it's easy to say, well, he didn't have enough faith. I hear people sometimes say, well, Vlad, if he would have had just more faith. Shut up. Really? Or my uncle died out of cancer. Oh, if he would have had more faith. Please shut up. Okay, Abraham had a lot of faith. His wife was barren. But Abraham, you know, it takes more faith sometimes to continue to believe God for healing when you're sick than to walk around when you've never been sick. Okay? And so we don't believe in that jumbo stuff. We believe that faith doesn't mean that you'll never have sickness. It means that just you will never live under that sickness and you will overcome that sickness, whether in this life through healing or in the resurrection, through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. But sickness will be removed eventually. The Lord is good and He never could his sickness, but He is faithful. What does that mean for us today? Is continue to serve others, continue to pray for others, continue to pray for healing for other people. You must say, ah, I can't do that, man. I, I, you know, I have certain uh, infirmities myself. Why not? Because when you are hurting, you actually have more compassion for the sick people than you realize. And sometimes what you do for others, God will do for you. And plus, you don't pray for healing because you're healed. You pray for healing because Jesus died on the cross and because He's a healer. Jesus is the source of our faith and Jesus is the source of our ministry, not our experience. Even though experience adds to our faith and confidence. But experience is not the foundation of it. And number six, and I believe this is the most important one. Celebrate the greatest miracle which is the salvation of your soul. When you're not seeing healing, or perhaps somebody died and they didn't experience healing and they died from a heart attack or they died from cancer or they died from another illness and whether they were full of age or they were young of age. At the end of the day, we celebrate the greatest miracle and that miracle is salvation of the soul. Sickness was defeated by Jesus. It's being defeated by His continual healing ministry. And one day it will be totally defeated when we will be in that place where there will be no more sickness and there will be no more curse, no more tears, no more night and no more sorrow. You will be f free from sickness, either in healing or in resurrection. Now, of course, we don't just postpone everything to resurrection. But at the same time, there are things we will experience only later. And there are things we'll experience as well now. When disciples had a successful ministry trip and cast out demons and they rejoiced, Jesus redirected their joy and said, Rejoice in the fact that your names are written in the book of life. I think that sometimes when people die, when we go to funerals, we're once again reminded life is short. In this world, we will have trouble. And then we have eternal life that doesn't start when we die. It starts when we surrender our life to Jesus Christ. So I understand that this may come off, you know, it's a little shock for some people who may be disappointed that, you know, Vlad is not like 100% just on healing. I am. And we see crazy healings in our ministry. We will continue to see those healings. I've seen healing in my own life. I've seen healing with things that I've struggled for a very long time with extreme migraine headaches that the Lord supernaturally healed me from. I was taking pills very regularly. It changed my life after that. I've seen healings for people who had paralysis, people who had cancer, people who had um, all kinds of incurable illnesses. And I continue to pray for healing. But I also have seen people that we prayed for. Maybe it's lack of our faith. Maybe there was something we didn't know. I don't know. But I'm not going to jump in and just simply say, well, if you just simply do this one simple thing, because it's not always as easy as a lot of faith healers will make it seem to be. What I do know is his yoke is easy, his burden is light. And I know that this life, in this life, God is good. But we will definitely see more of that goodness even in life to come. And we have to always look forward to what the Lord has for us because the best is truly yet to come. And drop that in the comment below. What you think of this video? What are your thoughts? Uh, share with me what maybe a testimony of healing. Have you been healed before? Or perhaps you're battling with something right now and you're believing uh, the Lord for healing. And uh, maybe you've been condemned that you don't have enough faith, that uh, you, somehow God is not with you. Uh, let me know your thoughts in the comment below. God bless you and until next time.